an unusual topic for me, but one that can't really be avoided if you are interested in the welfare of the Christian nations, and in, particularly if you live in one, as I do. Last weekend, we had a rally called Unite the Kingdom, and it's attended by huge numbers of people. It was organised by Tommy Robinson. On TV very recently, Richard Tice, one of the leaders of the Reform Party, whose members are composed in a great part of those people who attended that rally, and whose supporters certainly are, are very critical of Tommy Robinson and of those attendees. And that's caused a lot of blowback on him and, by extension, the Reform Party. And there are many people on YouTube saying this is quite right and people should be going to other parties and it's understandable what they are. I just think there ought to be a pause. One must understand the position of men like Tice. They want to displace the Tory party. They're seeking to do this in the context of a media which has demonised Tommy Robertson and all those who are associated with him in any way. If reform is to displace the Tory party, or at least to bite great chunks out of it, then it cannot afford to be associated with Tommy Robinson and anybody who's associated with him. And so it is understandable politically that Tice would do what he's done, say what he said. It doesn't mean he could have been more subtle about it. He could have, been, could have been subtle, could have been nuanced, could have kept his mouth shut, really, when asked questions by a journalist. But that's by the by. People make mistakes. People don't always get things right. One mustn't lose the big picture. The importance of reform is that it's a stepping stone to the regeneration of the entire nation, but only a stepping stone. What is the objective? The objective is, as I say, the regeneration of the nation. Everybody who's not a screaming liberal should agree with that. <laughs> But there are paths to be followed. There are stepping stones. And reform is a vehicle to one of those very important stepping stones or milestones. That milestone is called proportional representation. Unless this country can change from a first-past-the-post system to a proportional representation system, there will be no fundamental change in British politics. Even if reform became the largest party, they simply become a Tory party mark two. It's just the nature of the system. So the system has to be changed. And UKIP, sorry, UKIP, I mean, reform wanting proportional representation, should they get sufficient support at the next general election, any Conservative Party that wants to form a government will require their support. And just as they had to give in to the Liberals in 2010 that wanted a referendum on proportional representation, so will the Tory party, if they want to form a government with reform support. And that's the key, though. But this time, I would say, forget the idea of a referendum. Simply require the Conservatives to commit in the first Parliament to pass a bill instituting proportional representation so that it will definitely take place at the next election. Otherwise, you can have a referendum where the media manipulators can get involved and persuade the people not to vote for proportional representation. You don't want that happening because proportional representation is the only way out of the morass we're in. Should we then get proportional representation, then reform can frankly be discarded. If you're not happy with those kinds of people, you don't have to vote for them because new parties can emerge. It'll be chaotic, especially at first, but it doesn't matter. Look at Italy. Italy's got a major crisis economic, political, it's in worse trouble than we are. But we had La Liga, Matteo Salvini's party. They went into coalition with Five Star, another new political party, but of the left. And Salvini was able to make great inroads into stopping boats landing on Italian soil full of so-called refugees. But he was supplanted by Giorgio Maloney, whose party, the Brothers of Italy, was called neo-fascist. But they won, and she has consolidated the party's power. In Britain, we don't have that. We don't have an opportunity. It doesn't have to be a, 
a, a Brothers of Italy type party or a La Liga type party. It'd be some other kind of party. But what matters is that there's space for us to breathe in the political system. Alternative views can be put across. And those who want a restoration of the nation can then find a political vehicle for making it happen. I can't see how this can be seen as a bad thing by anybody. And therefore, no matter what one thinks of Tice, Farage, any of these people, one must vote reform at the next election. Because if you go and vote for the old UKIP party, you'll split the votes. And there'll be no proportional representation ever. You could even vote for the Liberal Democrats, perish the thought, in seats where they were the second party at the last election because they too want proportional representation. The party itself doesn't matter. It's what it wants. And that that then opens up the system for real parties that want the interests of Britain to be put first to come into being and to gain power. Now, of course, power for what? And what is this restoration of Britain that I talked about? 